Professor Julian Sira, Chair of the Nobel Committee. What discovery have you awarded this year? So this year, the Nobel Assembly has awarded the 2015 Nobel Prize to William C. Campbell and Satoshi Omura for their discoveries concerning a novel therapy against infections caused by roundworm parasites, and that's jointly. And the other half is to, um, to UU for her discoveries concerning a novel therapy against malaria. Uh, I was at a press conference and it was a bit quiet. It, it seemed like people were not expecting this prize. Why, why is that? Well, probably as you know, <laughs> the Nobel Assembly and Nobel Committee, we keep most of our work very secret. And so for me as chair of the committee, I'm always quite pleased when people are surprised. It means we've done our work well. And every year we get between 300 and 400 individuals nominated. And so in some ways it'd be very difficult to almost guess who the laureate might be with that many individuals nominated each year. So I think I'm pretty happy that it was a surprise. Uh, the will of Arthur Nobel stated that the prizes should be awarded to those who have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. So how does this prize fulfill this criterion? Well, I think these two discoveries are a really good example of conferring the greatest benefit to mankind because both of these discoveries have led to therapies that are against um, parasites. So Campbell and Amura, um, their discoveries have led to drugs that are used now to treat roundworm infections. And this is causing diseases like elephantiasis and river blindness. Those two diseases are really debilitating. Um, people have lifelong suffering because of those diseases. And this drug therapy now can reduce the, um, the, the, the disease. UU2's discoveries have led to drugs against the malaria parasite. And that has also saved the lives of millions of individuals. So within the idea of Nobel, I think we have examples here that have conferred the greatest benefit to mankind. You know, these therapies, they save lives, they prevent disability, and they prevent the spread of infection, and they also improve um, the life well-being of individuals and economic growth. So I think this is a great example. Well, Nobel would have been happy. And why was the prize awarded now? Why, why this year? Why this year? Well, you know, every single year we start with a new plate and the committee and the assembly have been working very hard, going through the nominations, and we came to the conclusion that this was the best, you know, constellation, the best prize this year, and that's why we're here to talk about these laureates. Um, what are the key breakthroughs uh, that make these laureates worthy of the Nobel Prize? I mean, who did what? Who did what? So, you have to think of it as two parts. So Omura was working in Japan and he was really interested in identifying microbial and uh, uh, micro antibiotics. So he went to soil and he had a hypothesis that he would be able to collect soil samples and they would have bacteria that would ward off infection. And so he collected soil samples and cultured them in his laboratory and he looked for samples that had unusual properties. And then he then selected from thousands of cultures, about 50 of these samples that he set on. And Campbell could take these samples and give them to animals, to mice. They took lyophilized broths from these samples, mixed them in the food of mice, and they could find that they had anti-parasitic effects. They could kill parasites in mice. Campbell also took these compounds and he tested them in livestock, in farm animals, in cattle, poultry, domestic animals, dogs, and he could show that these compounds could kill roundworm parasites. He also, Campbell, could show that there was durability, that one dose of this compound was sufficient to kill parasites for up to a year. These experiments, or these discoveries, led to the clinical development of a drug called ivermectin. And that was used later to be able to treat people who had river blindness. UU2, she was part of a larger project. The project had probably little, little progress, but she came on the scene. She took the challenge of turning to traditional Chinese medicine. And she was 
um, surveying different plants for their active compounds against malaria. And she identified one plant, Artemisia anu, that was effective against killing the malaria parasite. But initially her results were mixed. So she went back to very ancient Chinese literature, 1,700 year old literature, and she got clues on how to refine and work with her extraction procedures. And from that, she was able to identify an extract that was 100% efficient in killing the malaria parasite. She then went on and tested that in monkeys and later in humans. So was this considered a breakthrough at the time when those findings were presented sort of? I think that they, you know, they were because they were so efficacious. So they were seen as a breakthrough. Now, um, admittedly, the work of UU2 was largely seen in China and that really came to the Western world some years later. But it was clear that both of these compounds, Avermectin first with Campbell and um, Artemisinin with UU2, were seen to be very effective in killing parasites. One was killing roundworm parasites, the other one on the malaria parasite. Since there are a lot of young people watching right now, um, how will you explain in an easy way to the importance of this prize to uh, a grade school student? I take it down to the grade school level. Um, you can imagine that um, if you are going to go on an African safari, you're going to go to the tropical regions of the world where these parasite infections are very prevalent. You would take along your mosquito net, you take along your bug sprays, but you may still get bit by a fly or a mosquito that might transfer either the roundworm parasite or the malaria parasite to you. If that would happen, you would become very ill. Because of these drugs, we now have therapies that kill these parasites very early in their life cycle. They not only kill these parasites, but they stop these infections from spreading. So it's, it's one way to kill the parasite, another way to stop it from infecting other people. Now, if you turn our attention to laureates, who are they? Okay, mm -hmm. so um, Satoshi Omura is still active. He's working in Japan. Um, he's a microbiologist, and he really had a long history in working with um, soil samples and uh, bacteria and trying to identify active compounds from bacteria that, that could be efficacious. Um, he's still active as a scientist today. William Campbell, he's a parasitologist. Um, he's retired, he's less active scientifically, but he had a long-standing career working towards developing uh, antibiotics for the livestock industry and was really instrumental in taking these therapies towards the clinic with his other collaborators. Yu Yu Tu, again, I believe she's retired, but um, she's in Beijing, China, at the China um, Traditional Medicine Academy and um, had worked for many, many years utilizing traditional Chinese medicine. And finally, has the Nobel Committee been able to reach any of the laureates? So Urban has been successful in contacting um, Dr. Omura this morning. He was delighted and he was very pleased to be awarded the prize together with William Campbell. He thinks he's a very nice person. He's really excited about this, this joint award. We have not been in contact with William Campbell, nor have we had contact with Tu Yu Yu. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <laughs>